and welcome back to Nucleus Shortcuts. I'm your host, Adam Dudley. Today's topic is vol management and the CISA catalog. Our expert on the topic today is Ryan Kreibler, and Ryan is a Nucleus Vulnerability Research Engineer. Would you please kick us off with a brief take? You know, what the heck is the CISA Kev catalog? And please include a light dose of historical context, if you would. I think it would be good to break down sort of what uh, CISA is and then also what sort of authority they represent. So, um, you know, CISA is the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. Um, and so to, to, to you know, rip it right off their homepage, uh, they, they lead the effort to enhance the security, resiliency, and reliability of the nation's cybersecurity and communications infrastructure. It's a mouthful. But uh, so, so clearly from, from that statement, uh, they, they have an interest in uh, elevating the nation's uh, security posture or security maturity as a whole. So, uh, you know, with that, uh, they, they uh, you know, CISA leadership themselves uh, strongly encourage, uh, you know, better, better partnership and better communication between the, the federal space and the, the private space. Okay. Um, and so, so one, one way of, of elevating this communication that, that relates to elevating security posture is, is the Known Exploited Vulnerabilities Catalog. The CISA Known Exploited Vulnerabilities Catalog, um, it actually falls under uh, a, something called a binding operational directive uh, that, that CISA um, sort of uses as uh, an overall uh, way to push actions forward. Um, so the, the Binding Operational Directive 2201, which is what the KEV falls under, um, it is the, the mission to reduce the significant risk from known exploited vulnerabilities. So the KEV is, uh, you know, simply put, as I said, it's a known exploited vulnerabilities catalog. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, with, with this list of, I think right now the list is at 800 something, 812 CVEs, something like that. Okay. Uh, so obviously that is that is a pretty small list of, mm -hmm. of CVEs compared to uh, overall known CVEs. Um, so really, what this creates is is an actionable list to say, um, you know, what what are the, the the exploitable vulnerabilities that the U.S. government themselves have identified as being used in a in a security event? Why does the CISA CAP catalog matter? in the context of vulnerability management programs, especially with regards to private enterprises that aren't obligated to follow it, like a lot of our commercial customers, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's right. So yeah, the, the binding operational directive, obviously clearly um, the, the actions that, that CISA um, you know, maintains in this, in this catalog, one thing is that they give a due date for, for every uh, vulnerability within the catalog. They, they assign a due date to it, and you know any any federal agency that is under the the regulation or the you know the policies that they must follow mm -hmm. um, under CISA, you know they they need to have that vulnerability remediated by that due date. Um, so obviously the private sector doesn't doesn't fall under that same regulation, but you know I think it, I think it is important to mention that you know regardless of of being federally obligated to to follow this this action or not, I think that. Um, the the Kev uh, purely has has merit uh, based on the the source of truth that that it comes from. So you know, like CISA, clearly, um, not only do they have a, a leg in in understanding a lot of security events that happen within the nation, but they also um, they're they're a much more confident source of truth uh, for for a list uh, you know like this or the or the role that this list is trying to play uh, versus you know some some private sector company coming out with this list at it might have uh, not as much confidence behind it as it would from from you know the U.S. federal government. So, um, so, so really, I think we should start with you know like what is the problem? the The problem is is that vuln and patch managers are overwhelmed by the amount of disclosures that happen every year. They're the overwhelmed by the amount of CVEs they have in their environments that, and they're and they're also underfunded to to handle these problems uh, year after year, right? So right. the CISA KEV, I think, um, even if you're not following it through uh, federal regulation, I think, it, I think it can certainly play a role in uh, prioritizing vulnerabilities. You know, you can say, it, it, I think the, the KEV allows you to take a step back and say, you know, even if we have 250,000 vulnerabilities, how many of them are in this list of 800? And then is that an actionable goal that we can say moving forward where, you know, you can you can say 
it from six months from now or however long the, the remediation takes, you can then say, I have patched and remediated every single known exploitable vulnerability in my environment. And so I think if you were to eliminate the KEV and then try to move forward with that same objective, it becomes a lot more gray and a lot more confusing where it's like, you're not sure if, if every single known exploitable vulnerability in your environment is remediated, but with that KEV list, with that sort of truth uh, from the federal government, I think it's a much more uh, dignified um, actionable data point. Got it. So it, it, it's really, you know, we talk a lot about because there's so many vulnerabilities in an enterprise's environment, you know, you have, you, you're at the, we're at the point now where you have to use threat intel as a way to whittle down that list or that massive list of vulnerabilities to something more manageable, right? Mm -hmm. um, so this is, this is a cab author is a, a reputable and a robust source of intelligence that an organization, even on the private side, can use yeah. to make their list of vulnerabilities more manageable for their team. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and still feel like they're making mean, meaningful progress, right? And, and actually reducing risk for the organization. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think that's something the CAP does really well is, you know, obviously, regardless of federal regulation or not, I think it is an extremely useful data point. Um, and that it's only going to become more useful as as its lifetime goes on, and and as they as they further enrich it, because I, I know that CISA has some has some plans to, um, you know, enrich the Kev further, and uh, some active users of the Kev already will know that the um, the notes column in the uh, in the Kev table has been um, historically empty for for each vulnerability. They don't really add many uh, notes to it, but re recently they've they've started adding more notes um, in that column, and and I assume that. Uh, over time, the the enrichment within that table alone will definitely grow. Got it. Got it. One thing I thought would be interesting to ask about was the the Kev list doesn't include any information about industry verticals, right? Let's say mm -hmm. my enterprise is in financial or retail. Uh, CISA doesn't tell me if those vulnerabilities are of high concern for my industry, does it? I would say the Kev kind of plays a level above that. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, that's that's where, you know, we would encourage you to use as many sources of threat intelligence as you can. Um, so, you know, I think the CISA Kev is purely, um, you know, is is the vulnerability exploitable or not? Or has it been successfully exploited uh, in a known security event? So that's where we would encourage uh, organizations to, to use other sources of threat intelligence and not just the CISA Kev to purely determine, um, you know, is this is this uh, vulnerability of particularly higher risk to me? Uh, individually um, with where our organization is in, in the industry. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's definitely where other sources of threat intelligence are going to be able to provide that information. Would you talk a little bit about how Nucleus uses Sysikev in the application and you know how our customers use the information to build better programs? So Sysikev, um, the, the most clear uh, implementation of the platform is that um, you know within the active vulnerabilities page, um, mm -hmm. and, and any vulnerability that you find, um, as long as it has a CVE associated with it, um, you'll be able to see the uh, vulnerability intelligence tab at the top of the modal. Um, and then within that vulnerability intelligence tab, we'll have a very simple uh, false or true switch on if it's a vulnerability that is currently uh, obtained in the Sysikev. And so we, we update that daily. Um, so it, it shouldn't be uh, too far behind really anytime. So mm -hmm. anytime you find a finding, if it's if it's identified as something being in the Kev, that's that's certainly a data point to work off of. Um, you can you can build automation rules based off of uh, results of a vulnerability. If it's mm -hmm. in is this a Kev or not, you can build uh, reporting. Um, and then uh, I mentioned the uh, the breakdowns that we do as well. So we provide um, extra analysis on top of uh, each addition to the to the Kev list and and also point out any notable ones that that might be particularly interesting to to put more eyes on for. Um, you know, any any particular reason, whatever it might be. Is there anything you think is most important for folks to walk away with? Regardless of federal regulation, uh, you know, just, you know, forget about that for a second. The, the CISA Kev mm -hmm. is, is without a doubt a useful uh, data point for, for threat intelligence and also for uh, prioritization. Um, so, you know, the, the, you know, I spoke on that objective earlier of, of if you want to put a goal in place of, I want to remediate every known exploitable vulnerability in my environment. You can take this as a Kev and you can do that and you can action on it and it can it can be a goal moving forward. But 
if you were to take away that data point and simply just not use it, even though it's there free for everyone to use, mm -hmm. if you were to take that data point away, that objective becomes uh, you know a lot more gray and a lot more complicated. Do you think this information being public helps bad actors at all? I would say purely from the role that the Kev plays, um, mm -hmm. it, it's a fair question. It, it is. Yeah. Um, but I, I think purely from the role that the Kev plays, I, I don't think um, that as of right now, it's as, as useful to attackers as it would be defenders. Um, I think that if the if the Kev got a little bit more enriched to the point where, you know, because there, there are some, you know, obviously some things that we think that the Kev could improve on, you know, the mm -hmm. uh, the uh, amount at which something is being exploited in the wild. Um, that isn't really something that's uh, highlighted in the Kev. So like when they come out with a new vulnerability and they say, hey, we know that this CVE is is being exploited in the wild. Mm -hmm. We don't know how much. They, it could be mass scanning happening. It could be mass exploitation um, or sure. it could be, uh, you know, a one off security event. Um, so there there are certainly some some points of enrichment that the Kev can can still uh you know, have added on to it to make it more useful to defenders. But but also, I think something like that might uh, potentially bleed into the question of, you know, when does this become useful information for attackers as well? So, uh, yeah, I think that's definitely a fair question to keep in mind. And we'll see you soon on the next Nuclear Shortcuts. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Adam. See you guys.